Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Welcome back. You're still watching Countdown with us. Just 25 minutes to go for markets to shut shop. And uh, there has been a recovery after Nifty breached the yesterday low mark and also the 50 DMA. Um, the lows were about 11,625 and we're currently just somewhere about 11,650. So intraday recovery of nearly 40 to 45 points is what you're witnessing on Nifty. Bank Nifty has also seen some recovery. Let's just pull up the intraday chart of that one. It slipped into the red and right now it's just sitting around the levels of 30,300. This is um, Bank Nifty has managed to defend its 50 DMA for the week as well. And I uh, uh, just want to look at the broader markets, whether they've also staged any recovery because they've been underperforming uh, Nifty mid cap and the small cap indices had seen correction of between one and a half to almost two percent in trade. No, not really actually. Small cap is still sitting with cuts of about two percent. Mid cap down about one and a half, nearly one and a half percent. And market breadth continues to be weak. Before we uh, go across to Summit to find the FAB4 stocks, I just want to check what the European markets are doing currently. Um, remember, Europe will be in focus ahead of that FOMC meet today. Uh, it's red across Europe as well, but no sharp losses seen. FTSE down about three tenths of a percent. CAC and DAX also seeing some bit of meager losses, not any minor correction seen there. But uh, We've been talking about a lot of high beta stocks, how they've been correcting. But in a market like this, let's go across to Samit Sarkar to find out if he's managed to uh, find any FAB4 stocks for today. Samit. Well, we have managed to find the FAB4 stock. The first on the list is Blue Star. Now, that stock is up uh, close to 3.5% uh, trade, and that is after the company backed an order worth 253 crore from Mumbai Metro. Second on the list is Tata Steel. That stock is also up close to 3.5%. That is after Goldman Sachs reinstated its buy rating on the stock with a target price of close to uh, 570 rupees. Now, this is after now the brokerage is saying that IONO integration will be beneficial for the stock, and that's the reason they have a buy rating for this counter. Third on the list is SH Kilka, which stock is up nearly 3%. Now, the stock has snapped its 9-day losing streak and volumes today are nearly 4 times its 20-day average. And this, as you can see here, the stock is up nearly 3%. Last on the list is Z Entertainment. That stock is up close to 2.5%. That is after we have seen uh, fresh long build-ups on, uh, on, on the counter. Well, the open interest is nearly 4.5% uh, uh, for this counter today. Right. Okay, uh, Samet, uh, thanks so much for getting us those Fab Four stocks. And I'm absolutely certain that it is a tough day to get well, stocks which are advancing in trade. But on that note, let me get in Rajat Sharma of Sana Securities, who is joining us to take us through his views. Rajat, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's not looking like a market which seems and uh, which is indicating anything encouraging right now. Uh, your view in general, is this a time to perhaps uh, like seek opportunities or would you really want to wait a little while before uh, the dust settles? Good afternoon. So, you know, my broad view on the market has been that to the extent you find stocks which, you know, you're happy to hold for a very long time, which you're convinced will not be available at the price at which they are if markets don't fall from uh, from this point for the next one year, those stocks you should definitely continue to hold in your portfolio. In fact, add more. But other than that, I think I agree with you. Most pockets of the market, there is, you know, it, it's absolutely impossible to find opportunities in, you know, financial services and uh, NBFCs and, you know, the, the sectors which were supposed to do really well in the next five years until uh, two years back. Those stocks and those sectors have become so overvalued that, you know, you'd be better off holding your money in uh, instruments that give you a fixed rate of interest although you know with what's happening in the in the debt markets even that is becoming difficult um, so you know fd would probably be your best bet if you were to play out this next six months or a year but having said that you know i don't think you should completely uh, avoid buying stocks because there are a lot of stocks in this market which have seen these previous uh, uh, corrections in the market and they move sort of you know, as they say, cycle to cycle, and if markets don't fall for the next one year or so, and it, frankly, it's anyone's guess when that big fall in the market will happen. You know, every time the market falls 5 7% now or 10%, a lot of investors are confused whether it's going to be 2018 or 2008. 
you know, in 2018 it fell about 8-10% and bounced back. In 2008 it was a completely different story. But in either case, one thing that you would see is that the stocks which have seen many of these cycles continue to move at a rate much higher than the rate of the market. So those kind of stocks you should definitely add to your portfolio even in this market because chances are a lot of these stocks, if markets don't fall for the next six, eight months or fall and you know bounce back, will not be available at these prices no matter how much the markets fall in future. Okay, Rajat, uh, stay on. We would uh, get your thoughts on which are the stocks that you would like to buy now on these corrections. But right now onto the chart of the day. Equities have their fair share of ups and downs. But what's unique about these three stocks that Yashupadhyay wants to talk about have had a rather horrid run, not this year, but over the last five years. The universe referred here uh, are all Indian equities with a market cap of more than 1,000 crore. Yash, over to you. Which are these stocks? Uh, good afternoon, Namneet. So uh, we did a piece not not a long while back uh, on which were the two stocks which actually managed to give positive return in each of the last 10 years. Uh, but, uh, moving on from that, there, we have tried to look back at which are the stocks which have given negative return in each of the last financial year uh, with obviously the, uh, the, the criteria of them having a market cap of more than 500 crore rupees, which brings down the universe to 937 stocks, of which there were only three stocks, two from the PSU banking space and one from from the Reliance ADAG group, uh, which have given negative return in each of the last financial year, as well as an FI20 till date. And they are the likes of Yuko Bank, Indian Overseas Bank, and Reliance Power. In each of the last financial year, the stocks have fallen anywhere between 15 uh, to 77 percent. In fact, over the last five-year period, if you take uh, take a point to point to point return, uh, they've fallen close to 77 to 96 percent when it comes to Reliance Power in this period. Now, this is mainly on account of the weak operational performance by these players. The state-owned lenders, they had to give out huge uh, loans in order, uh, on behalf of the government in order to fund the infrastructure projects, which eventually became, uh, became an NPS uh, and, and a lack of monitoring uh, you know, of ability of these banks. Uh, that resulted into their gross, uh, gross NPM, uh, NPA percentages rising as high as 25% uh, for these two state lenders. And for Reliance Power, uh, Devin Choksi is a market expert. He says that it was a clear case of a cash flow mismatch as the company took up huge investments in order to fund their infra projects, uh, which only uh, yielded very few or uh, lower receivables, and on account of which they took a large amount of debt, and uh, subsequently huge losses came onto their books. They reported a net loss of nearly 3,000 crores in FI19, which was the first time uh, in a very long period that the company, in fact, reported a net loss, and the stock is down close to 96% in that period. So these are the three stocks in which at any point if an investor had you know, put his money, would have lost his... Uh, would would have uh, would have not been able to make money on his investment. Quite the metaphor there our producers have also used. Three bad apples because uh, bad apples can lead to well worse apples in the pack. Uh, Yash, thank you so much for joining in and taking us through those stocks uh, which have, uh, of course, uh, well uh, had their own issues and which may very well have problems in terms of contagion as well. Hence, I suspect our producers have used three bad apples there. But uh, Rajat, I'll come back to you on this very issue that we were talking about, and that is contagion. Um, well, uh, how are you reading into the current challenges that the NBFCs uh, are facing? You know, one might argue that uh, a lot of these uh, issues are, well, specific to these companies. But there is always the aspect that uh, if you do have a default somewhere down the line, there will be others which will be in play. And based on these, taking all these factors into consideration, uh, what are you doing with the non-banking names? Yeah, you know, to answer you in one word in terms of how am I looking at it, how am I do dealing with this, I think in one word this is opportunity. Uh, uh, Often times when overvalued stocks correct so much, investors get really negative. Uh, why would you hold these stocks at a price at which they were available? Even today, you know, I see investors and mutual fund houses buying HDFC Bank and HDFC. Makes absolutely no sense. Now, I'll give you an example of uh, a stock that we've recently added to our portfolio, which, you know, I've anyways been holding for a long time. We've basically just increased our allocation to this stock. We sent out a mailer to all our clients, and that's uh, Canfin Homes. If you see uh, the top five uh, uh, housing finance NBFCs, they command 78% of the total assets in the housing finance space. HDFC and LIC alone have about 51% of that. So if you see the next two players, which is DHFL and uh, uh, India Bulls Housing Finance, 
that was about 20% of total assets in the space and both those companies are facing problems you know with no fresh capital coming in they will not be extending loans India bulls right now you know there's no problem but there is some perception there that things could go wrong I think the biggest beneficiary for uh, for of these problems would be companies below them in terms of size so Canfin Homes is clearly one and you know make no mistake this stock was available at 600 rupees since then nothing has changed for this stock other than valuations coming down and uh, you, you know you see their EPS continues to grow at 22 rupees uh, a quarter uh, their NPS have actually come down to about 0.43 percent so uh, no matter how you look at it this is great news for somebody who's uh, looking to invest money in housing finance companies two years back this was the biggest story of India and I remember how there was so much frenzy around housing finance there were 25 30 odd companies that started into this business a lot of brokerages got into this nothing has changed the growth is there the potential for this sector to grow remains but just that the sentiment has turned so negative because of you know what's happened with DHFL and what's now uh, happening with the India Bulls housing finance uh, as I said this is a great opportunity to increase holding here or uh, take position in uh, Canfin homes if you don't have that so that's one stock we've added recently okay Canfin but homes. you know one more thing that I like a lot of the whether it's NBFCs or the banking names a lot of these stocks are right now available at extremely extremely high valuations so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those stocks correct the way you know some of these DHFLs of the world and India Bulls of the world have corrected and uh, a lot of these stocks have not seen the previous cycles of corrections and I'm talking about favorites right now Bajaj Finsur, Bajaj Finance uh, I wouldn't want to buy these kind of stocks at such high valuations uh, it's just that right now it's hard to pay attention to this kind of advice but uh, you know uh, two years three years down who knows what can what can happen there okay uh, markets have recovered the losses that we had seen in fact it's recovered about uh, close to 70 points nifty but it still remains off the day's high remember in the morning session um, it did touch the mark of 11,800 very quickly just want to address two stocks that can come out of the FNO band for tomorrow's trade one of them is PC jewelers and the other one is Reliance Capital the overall open interest as a percentage of market wide position limit as of yesterday as seen on your screen is was between 83 to about 85 for a stock to come out of the FNO band it has to breach the 80 percent it has to fall below the 80% mark. There's some recovery that has come in for PC jewelers, definitely just about trading flattish right now. And Reliance Capital is still reeling under pressure. That's down about 14%. Just a caveat, um, the trends can change in the last 10 to 15 minutes of trade. But moving on, it's time to take a look at what the dealing rooms are recommending in trade today. We've got Yatin Mota as well as Darshan Mehta joining us with their channel checks. Good afternoon to both of you. Darshan, you go first. Yeah, so today the market looking extremely weak, especially for the mid-cap end of the market. So one of the counters that's been spoken about is just dial in which dealers indicate that some of the HNIs are taking short positions on the counter. Uh, valuations no doubt are expensive, so there is some bit of concern that's happening on just dial. The second stock is uh, Sriram Transport. No doubt the counter is up almost 1.6, uh, is up almost 1.2 percent. But overall, uh, whoever I spoke to, at least on the dealing room side and the analyst side, do indicate that there are concerns on the CV side of the market. Uh, even if you read the article that we had put out yesterday, do indicate that, you know, our truckers are not going ahead and uh, buying new vehicles uh, in fact there are vehicles for sale that are happening so Sriram transport is something that's been spoken about on the negative side and UPL for one is down almost 5% in trade today uh, dealers indicate that uh, some of the domestic mutual funds have been active sellers in UPL over the past few days but Yatin what are you hearing Darshan India Bulls uh, housing finance uh, that stock almost plunged 20% intraday is down 10% right now as well but dealers uh, do expect uh, that there could be some bounce back expectations as far as the entire NBFC pack is concerned after the recent correction. Uh, there is a hope of bounce back. Uh, let's see how it uh, you know, uh, shapes up. Uh, you know, 9% down and volumes also nearly 65 million shares traded in the cash markets. NTPC, uh, one of the defensive counters in the utility space, uh, dealers do expect uh, that uh, the uptrend will continue, especially. Uh, when domestic funds are said to be buyers here according to dealing room sources. So this is one stock when dealers uh, remain positive on from the trading side. And finally, Camlin Fine, uh, this is one stock uh, which was in the green has uh, turned in the negative. Uh, not much of a volume uh, action here today, but dealers do indicate that HNIs are buyers as far as uh, Camlin Fine is concerned at lower levels. Okay, uh, Yathan, thanks so much for getting us those uh, stocks which the dealing rooms are talking about to their clients. But uh, in terms of some other handful of stocks that we want to address, uh, well, one of them is Tata Steel. This one is a really tough one to call because uh, 
Well, we've had so much uh, coming in from U.S.-China relations and the possible implications it may have on commodities. Tata Steel for today is bucking the trend and it is, it is advancing by around 5%. I'm not going to talk about the fundamentals, but I would want a technical check here. So, Amar, I'll come to you on Tata Steel. Uh, what's your view? How are you reading into the technicals? Yeah, looking at Tata Steel, uh, definitely on the short-term charts, uh, that's the weekly charts, and the daily charts, there is uh, a bullish uh, uh, momentum and I would say uh, a positive uh, divergence. Uh, however, on the weekly charts, what we see is on the upside towards 508, 510, uh, that's, a, that's a level of resistance for uh, Tata Steel. So, taking it that out is going to be very crucial. So, I would say roughly, I would uh, say 510, 520 on the upside is going to be a very crucial zone of resistance. So, Tata Steel uh, would find it difficult to trade above that level. Only a breach above 520 could lead to a rally towards uh, 535, 540. On the downside, yes, now it's made a very strong base around 470, 480 level. So, it could be either consolidation in this zone or uh, a breakout. Okay, well, incremental buying definitely coming in for Tata Steel in the last 15, 20 minutes of trade, inching closer to that mark of 15, uh, 500. Um, just 10 minutes to go for markets to close, so let's get some closing ideas going. Uh, uh, Amal, let me come to you. Uh, any BTST or any STBT for tomorrow's trade? Yeah, there's one stock uh, one can look at, and uh, that is Voltas. Uh, because uh, if you look at Voltas, Voltas is one stock which definitely has bucked the trend. And uh, today also it has been positive. It's up by almost one and a half percent. And uh, technically, looking on the charts, be the be the be the weekly charts or the daily charts, the stock uh, continues to trade positive. So currently it's around 608. Uh, so this is one stock one can look at uh, on the upside. There's a possibility of 627, um, and the stop loss needs to be 591 for this stock. Okay. And Mana, what about you? Uh, what your, your closing strategies? See, at the current levels, I like NTPC. Uh, in fact, the prices has sustained above its important short-term averages, and there has been a breakout as the prices are trading above its 132 resistance level. The volumes are also confirming. So, NTPC can be a BTST, a stop loss of 131 on the lower side for an upside target of 139. The other stock which is looking weak is Ujjivan. Uh, in fact, you know, after a short-term consolidation, there has been a breakdown into the stock on the daily chart, and the prices are witnessing selling pressure and there has been a uh, increase in volume along with open interest i sense in the near term if the prices trade below 331 can still witness some sort of a selling pressure and on the lower side we could see levels of 305 a stop loss of 332 can be placed into g1 for a short term stvt okay that's a sell uh, on ujivan financial we spoke about tara steel but another uh, tara group company which is bucking the trend today is trend pull up that stock uh, it's gained about 4 to 4.5% i was just looking at the data um, there is some delivery based buying which has happened in this counter it's sitting at days high and out of the volumes traded today at least on nsc 4.2 lakh shares have been traded around 75% is the delivery which uh, the exchange data currently is indicating. So um, let me come to uh, uh, go across to Rajat and get his views if he's tracking this uh, space, uh, space, the retail pack. Uh, uh, Rajat, any thoughts on Trent and are you tracking the retail space? If yes, uh, which are the favorites there? No, actually nothing in retail space. I think uh, I've long believed that uh, from time to time retail does get attention, but you know, in an age where we're fast moving to online consumption in the retail space. I don't see how any of these stocks could outperform that. Manav, a technical check on Trent, which is sitting at days high? Yes, and uh, uh, see the, the moment in, into the stock has been quite positive. In fact, if we see its overall trend uh, has been, you know, the stock has been forming a series of high tops and bottoms. And today, the kind of a breakout that it has witnessed and it is trying to close above 410 I think that would definitely qualify for a bullish breakout on the on the weekly as well as on the monthly charts also the volumes are quite well placed uh, I think uh, for a short term perspective also one can expect a near term momentum uh, I recommend that one should maintain a, 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 a stance and one can expect at least a 15% move after such a breakout usually takes place so one can maintain a bound dips approach on the lower side 405 can be the stop loss for the stock okay uh, Rajat, what we've also seen of late is, uh, you know, while 
the, the big stocks in the FMCG space, which include Hindustan Unilever or ITC, there's, there hasn't been as much let up, despite the fact that the entire sector has seen a little bit of a slowdown, a moderation, if I can call it, in terms of volumes. But when it comes to, uh, well, the next rung of players, which would include something like a Dabur or an Imami, or for that matter, even Britannia, there is, they, these stocks have been under pressure. My question really is, uh, how are you going about uh, the FMCG space right now? And uh, what would you do? How would you choose your stocks at right this point? Yeah, so, you know, I, <clears throat> I believe that stocks like ITC and HUL are stocks we should hold in your portfolio whenever they're available at valuations below their 10-year, you know, price earnings uh, multiple uh, on a trail basis. So I think ITC has always traded above 30, 32. If you look at it today, it's available around 26, 27 which is you know a very good price point so you know why even look at the second tier fmcg stocks your frontline stocks have not performed you know itc has gone nowhere in the last two years and uh, <clears throat> with the kind of stock it is uh, i i i think uh, the demand for cigarettes is not going down uh, in future uh, the uh, hike in uh, excise on tobacco uh, has happened in past i don't think they're gonna uh, do that at least in this budget so this is a stock which always waits for that announcement uh, I think if I had to choose stocks in this sector, HUL and ITC, the frontline stocks that you spoke about, are actually available at very good price points. They've not gone anywhere in the last two years. Uh, so yeah, I'd stick to that. In fact, as a matter of fact, ITC is, you know, I hold that stock in my portfolio and most client portfolios. So that is definitely one stock you can add more here. <clears throat> okay, uh, Rajat, uh, on that note, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us and taking us through your views this afternoon. And of course, uh, it's been a challenging afternoon for those uh, who are long in the markets, especially the ones in the broader markets. But uh, I'm going to take up ITC uh, right now because, you know, if you actually look at the analyst ratings on Bloomberg, you have a significant amount of analysts out there who have a buy rating on ITC. And uh, you're actually looking at an upside, if I'm not mistaken, of, uh, all right, uh, as much as, well, 25%, even from current market levels. Of course, Rajat has mentioned that it is currently trading below its price to earnings ratio, uh, uh, which is of a 10 year average. Uh, that said, uh, let me take up a technical view here too. Uh, Amar, how are you looking at well, the movements in ITC? At least over the last few days, it's been consolidating, but perhaps on a longer term basis, what's your view? Um, see, if looking at ITC from a long term perspective, uh, it's, it's completely a trendless uh, uh, stock. The stock is not going anywhere on the downside. We find that the stock has got very strong support coming around 265, 270 levels. So even if you look for the last almost uh, uh, year or so, so somewhere around 260, 265, that's a very strong support zone. For the stock, again, on the upside, the stock finds it's very difficult to uh, sustain above 295, 300 levels. So this is a stock which is uh, definitely in a, in a trading zone. And uh, I would say uh, buying close to 265 odd levels, if there's some correction, that could be a good level to buy because the stock does not uh, uh, breach that level. Whereas on the upside, uh, uh, 295, 300 is a level of resistance and technically also if you look, if you look at the longer term charts, uh, there's no trend uh, and also there's, uh, there's, there uh, doesn't seem to be a, a trend building up. So I would say it's more or less uh, a range bound play. Okay, and looking at the market closing, it turned out to be quite a volatile session where we did have a gap up opening. But currently, if you look at the closing, it's uh, significantly off the day's high of 11,800 and significantly above the day's low also of 11,625. Nifty is managing to close around the mark of 11,700 and above the 50-day moving average. Bank Nifty is also uh, going to have a positive closing around the mark of 30,400 and Sensex uh, slated to close with gains of about 90. 200 points and for the broader markets uh, where significant amount of selling pressure was seen and just no respite coming by nifty small cap index down 1.8 percent and mid cap seeing cuts about nearly one and a half percent slight bit of recovery but no major recovery could be seen when it came to the broader markets and for the, even the broader universe s p bsc 500 index uh, that's closing with cuts of about nearly two tenths of a percent looking at the nifty constituents which were the stock which led to the recovery uh, you had positive closing 
closing coming in from uh, Z. Uh, I think that was the last hour move or something. Top gainer on Nifty. Not even last hour. I believe five to ten minutes of trade. Tata Steel, another top gainer after some uh, uh, brokerage reinstated their buy with a target price of 570. Kotak Mahindra Bank had a good day. NTPC, other stocks like Titan, your heavyweights like HDFC and ITC are closing in the positive alongside HDFC Bank. So that's a good sign. On the losing side, your biggest loser once again in today's session was India Bulls Housing, though closing off the lows, but still uh, closing with cuts about 8.5%. Yes, Bank continues to reel under pressure in today's trade once again. UPL closing with cuts of nearly 4.5%. And other counters like Indusin Bank, Hero Motor Corp and Tata Motors are closing with cuts of between 2 to 3%. That's about the nifty constituents, Agam, but uh, uh, more selling pressure seen when it came to the broader markets. They were high beta over leverage counters where free fall continued. Yeah, you know what, Navneet, I'm actually managed to pick up a few gainers too. So I'm going to start by talking about some positives in the markets, even though the broader markets may not look very well. Uh, we did have Trent, which uh, did advance in trade, and it was one of the top gainers on the NSE 500. In fact, it's closing near day's highs at around up 5%. Uh, Symphony is the other one, along with a whole host of other uh, companies which are into the manufacturing and marketing of air conditioners. So Symphony, uh, something like a Blue Star of Voltas also did well. DCM Sriram is the other one uh, which I have picked up and that has advanced. Uh, of course, DCM Sriram should come up on your screen and that's up 2%. Uh, we've seen some gains and well, surprisingly, uh, we saw a little bit of selling off uh, in the last few minutes. So well, there you have it. Gen and Biocon, pardon me. Biocon is the other one which also was up and about at around 250 rupees per share. That's where it closed. But now let's talk about the, yeah, the losers and the same usual suspects uh, in the list. Gen irrigation right at the top, down 31% now closing below the mark of 20 rupees per share. Jet Airways, that's the next one, which is also declining by around 18.5%. No respite for this one. Reliance Capital under pressure. Well, it is in the f and band right now, but well, that hasn't stopped uh, well, investors from selling into the cash markets either. And we have Vakrangi, which is also down and out. That's down 13%. RB Infra from the infra space, <coughs> pardon me, that's down 11%. <coughs> we also have HEG, which is under pressure. That's down 9%. And Dilip Bilkon, again, uh, something that has been under pressure for, well, a, a few weeks now. And it is now below the mark of 400. That's also lost out about 9, 9.5%. So there certainly seems to be a lot of uh, pressure in the broader markets, Navneet. And that's evident in uh, the kind of verbal stocks that we've seen. That's right, and even the market breadth, which has remained negative for this month. And these are the final closing rates. Nifty finally closing above the mark of 11,700 after slipping to lows of about 11,625. Bank Nifty closing around the mark of 30,423. And Sensex uh, closing the day with gains of about 66 points. Let's quickly first look at the Nifty contributors list and check which were the stocks which led to the recovery and also a meager point move that we've seen today. So, uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank contributing the most 12 points on the upside. HDFC Twins, which have nearly 16 to 17% weightage and Nifty, uh, contributed about 15 points. And your heavyweight, another heavyweight, ITC, was up and about. Uh, well, on the downside, no major one stock, at least you can pinpoint, which dragged the index lower. But nevertheless, you had stocks like UPL, India Bulls Housing, and ICICI Bank, which are closing in the red again. Well, I'm actually curious to see about the advanced decline ratio because that clearly is not going to look good very, uh, at this point and there you have it well about uh, if you can go by the ratio of 4 to 12 we have about three losers for one gainer on the national stock exchange and even though that ratio perhaps improved marginally in the last one hour of trade there actually hasn't been too much of a change in that trend and as far as turnovers are concerned let's see whether or not there has been an increase and actually there has been and it's not only in the FNO space which actually saw 15 lakh uh, well, <coughs> crore shares, uh, or rather the stock worth of 15 lakh crores uh, well, exchange hands, but we've also seen NSE and BSC cash levels at reasonably high levels maybe a notch but above average. Yeah, but I think uh, NSC cash was below 30, I think, with the last two to three sessions. Finally, yeah. it's managed to to, uh, you know, once again have the turnover of above that mark of 30, nearly 33,000 crore at least on the NSC cash side. Lastly, if you could just pull up the India WIX uh, because that did spike up in the last hour of trade. But finally, with the index recovering from the lows, it's closing very flat in trade. Mm. 
around the levels of 14.5. On that note, let's uh, get you some closing thoughts from our experts. Uh, Manav, if I could come to you, a very volatile day, Nifty gyrated about 170, 180 points in trade. Um, how would you approach the markets tomorrow, considering it's Thursday, it's also the day for the weekly options expiry? Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, we have to keep a note of today's uh, high and low as important key pivots for the markets going forward. So the lay, uh, so around 11,800 to 11,600 would be the important support and resistance for the markets. I sense as long as we are trading below 11,800, we would be witnessing selling pressure for the markets. And for the expiry, uh, I believe expiry should be anywhere uh, around uh, 11,650 to 700. So uh, I don't see much of a, a trending move in the markets going forward until unless we uh, see a breakout from this support and resistance trading band and also uh, 11,600 is an important support which was its recent uh, gap pattern so on the lower side markets has enough cushions so we will see some sort of a choppiness movement and uh, 11,800 would be the strong resistance to look out for. And uh, what about your closing thoughts Amar? I would say that uh, we're definitely going to witness the same trend which we've been witnessing for the last couple of days so it's going to be sideways for the market. Uh, however, what we've seen in the last hour of trade today is that there is a bullish hammer uh, which has formed on the hourly charts and also there's a uh, bullish divergence on the hourly charts. So clearly reflecting that uh, there could be some uh, buying interest coming in tomorrow. Uh, however, the market finds it extremely uh, difficult to sustain above 11,780, uh, 800 levels where we could witness uh, profit booking. So, I, so it's likely to be in a range. On the downside, 11,590, 600, that's a very crucial and uh, strong support zone. All right, Manav, as well as Amar, we'll leave it at that note. Appreciate both of you joining us today and taking us through your technical views on the markets and also individual stocks. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Countdown. Thanks a lot for watching this show. It's goodbye from Agam, my side, and the entire team who put the show together. But stay tuned to Bloomberg Quinn. Market Wrap comes up next.